sounded really good. Good to be in God's house, isn't it? Amen. Good to see everybody here this beautiful Sunday morning. I'll tell you what, good looking attendance here. And if we just want to say if you're a visitor here with us, we just thank God that you're here. We just pray that you feel right at home, make yourself at home, and just know you're always welcome to be with us here at Crossroads Baptist Church. Just want to remind everybody every Sunday morning we have a Sunday school classes for all age groups, adults out here, children classes, teen classes in the back. And then every Wednesday night we have a prayer meeting Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. And I'll tell you what, Wednesday night's attendance has really picked up. I always look forward to it. It's always a great time. And I just want to say thank you to the church for your faithfulness to church on Wednesday night. I was talking to some other people, and, and I'll tell you, it's just that uh, we say it all the time. Brother Terry Clark says it. We say it all the time. Uh, uh, you just don't see what God's doing here. You don't see it everywhere. And I was talking to a, a, a people go to another church, and they say, you know, on Wednesday nights, we're lucky to have it at, at the most 20 people. But here on Wednesday nights, we'll hit 100 people most Wednesday nights. Isn't that a blessing? Thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> we would encourage you. Come out, be a part of that. It's always a great time, and I always look forward to that. Uh, by way of a couple of announcements, number one, I just want to say a thank you to everybody that had a hand in the Easter egg hunt here at the church yesterday. Who was here yesterday? Anybody was here yesterday? Raise your hand. There's quite a few here yesterday, and I was telling the men at the men's prayer room, I said, for the past couple of years, we've only had uh, around 20 or 30 children and maybe 50 or 60 people in total, but I believe yesterday we had around 60 children, and there was around 150 people here in total. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. That surely is a blessing. <laughs> Kids had a great time. We was able to invite some people out, talk to people, and I'll tell you what, it was really a great time. I just want to say a thank you to Miss Gretchen, Miss Helen, Miss Christy, uh, Brother Richard Thomas helped out. I mean, everybody helped clean any way, shape, or form. We do thank you for that. It was on uh, bouncy house duty. I'll tell you what, that was a job in itself, wasn't it, Neil? Where's Neil at the cross here? I'll tell you, Neil had a job out there at the bounce house, but I'll tell you what, it was surely a great time, and I just thank God for how he's blessing Crossroads Baptist. Okay, by way of announcements, I only have one next Sunday. Looking forward to next Sunday. It's going to be Easter Sunday morning, and we're going to do things next week a little bit different than normal. We're going to start that morning with a sunrise remembrance for our risen Savior starting at 8.30 in the morning. Lord willing, we'll be outside, weather permitting. If, it's, if we're not able to meet outside, if it's too cold, if it's rainy, whatever it may be, we'll meet in here. Here, have a quick little service, and then we're going to go down to the fellowship hall, have breakfast at 9 o'clock. So we would encourage you to bring a, a, a breakfast dish. The fellowship hall will be open, place it in there, and then immediately following sunrise, we'll go have breakfast at 9, and then service as usual, uh, Sunday school at 10, preaching at 11. I'm expecting a packed house next Sunday morning. You look around today, it's already full in here. Over the past little while, me and Brother Brian, me and Brother Jerry, me and leadership of the church we've been talking about what we're going to do if god keeps blessing this place amen space is going to run out it's going to run out that's a good problem to have amen i pray we got to build a church the size of walmart down here amen i'll tell you what god's really been blessing this place but i'm expecting a packed out service next sunday morning we would encourage you go out and invite somebody no doubt we all have we all have a family member we all have a co-worker we all have a friend that may be lost bring them Bring them. If they say, I don't want to go. Say, too bad, I'm coming to get you. I'm going to bring you. Amen. We're going to have a good time next Sunday. Really looking forward to that. That's it by the way of announcements. Just want to say a thank you to the church once again for how you helped out yesterday. Surely is a blessing. We do want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. A lot to be in prayer for the men's prayer room. We had requests after requests of people that sick, afflicted, bereaved, things like that. God knows each and every need. God knows each and every heart. But we do want to ask the Lord to bless the service today. I'm going to ask my brother in Christ, Brother Terry Clark. Would you pray for us this morning, my brother? Amen. Amen. That's right, brother. Yes. 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 Yes, we do. Yes. That's right. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. Y'all worship with the choir as they sing.
the choir comes down, let's all stand around fellowship a little bit. Choir sounded good. I'll tell you what, a crowd looking good, feeling good. Good day to be in God's house, ain't it? Amen. I like what we, my wife put a, she she colored it, I guess, on it, I wrote it, sign above the door for you coming to sanctuary. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in to the house of the Lord. Amen. See, a lot of people going by with their boats and cattle trailers, things like that. But I thank God I'm in here, Brother Richard Hancock. Amen. It's a place you come, you feel the presence of the Lord. Ain't that right? It's a place you come, you get your burdens lifted. You say, well, God lift your burdens just for coming to his house. You asked that lady that had a hunched back, and she had a little infirmity, and she was in the temple one day. And Jesus looked at her. He said, daughter, come here and heal her of her infirmity. Today may be the day for your blessing just because you came in here today. Amen. I'll tell you what, I love meeting with the Lord. Love meeting with his people. And I'll tell you what, thank God for all the musicians, all the singers we have here in the church. And we're going to have the Ritter family come up and sing for you now. And while they're coming up, I forgot one announcement. Thank God for wives that will set you straight. Amen. Uh, I was supposed to remind everybody that the sign-up sheet for Miss Sherry. Uh, 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 what's her last name? Garner? Will? William? Garner? Garner. I don't know. My mind, it just left me. Sherry Garner. Is it? Yeah, it's Garner. My mind's all over the place this morning. It's in the back for the lady circle. Anybody feels led, uh, feels led to sign up or take a hot meal? That is in the back on the bulletin board. But y'all pray for the Ritter family and Miss Helen Allen as they sing. Mama come back there and she said, uh, Christy, we're singing. I said, well, Mama, I, said, I got signs real bad. She said, Christy, we're singing. All you can say is yes, ma'am. <laughs> And I've been wondering why my husband has been shouting around the house because I haven't been talking. Turn us up, Jeremy.
Amen. Aren't you glad he'll never let go of your hand? Amen. That's surely a blessing. Not only is it a blessing, it's a promise inside the word. And if you're a child of God, you'll be a child of his until the day of redemption. Amen. I've never understood when people believe that you can lose your salvation. I've never understood it whenever people cannot have an assurance of their salvation. The Bible says, for these things have I written unto you that you may what? No. Don't say that you may hope. That you may think, it says that you may know that you have eternal life. How many of you are glad this morning that you know, that you know, that you know without a child of a doubt that you're saved? Amen. There's nothing more beautiful than knowing that you're saved. Amen. And I believe everything's all worked out this morning. And Lord willing, this morning, that's what we're going to look it into. I'm going to preach on this thought. Thank God I know I'm saved. Amen. Got your Bible. Let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter number one. The book of Philippians, chapter number one this morning. <clears throat> God is good. All the time. And all the time what? God is good. Praise God, I know that I am saved. Aren't you glad that you know this morning? Amen. <laughs> One of us is. Praise God. And he's on the front row of the church. Amen. <laughs> if you're a visitor here at Crossroads, there's a running joke here at the church of what is the front and what is the back. And we've done established on the count of a vote, this is the front of the church. In front of the sanctuary. That's the front of the church here. Yeah, this is the front of the sanctuary. Amen. Book of Philippians, chapter number 1. If you found your place, would you say amen? amen. Verse number 6, the Bible says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your sweet spirit that we fill in this house. Lord, we do thank you, God, for these people that's come and gather, Lord, to hear your word. And Lord, as we open up your word this morning, Lord, I pray, God, you make the preaching plain. God, make it powerful. God, make it convicting. God, would you speak to those hearts this morning, Lord, that so desperately need it. God, Lord, there may be somebody here today, God, that's looking for peace. God, they're looking for hope. God, they're looking for life. God, they're looking for a sense of assurance and security. God, I pray today they would find it at your feet, Lord, at the foot of the cross. Lord, I pray today, God, you'd help me preach the word, Lord, with boldness, with clarity. And Lord, I pray, God, even give assurance to everybody in attendance today and listening over the internet. Lord, we do love you. Lord, we do praise you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Like I said, that's what I want to preach on this morning. Praise God. I know that. And I'm saved. There's one thing you'll find out about me. I'm a, I'm a very, you ask my wife, I'm a very opinionated person about many different things. But there's some things where I've come to realize that I do not hold an opinion on. I hold a firm belief on. And it isn't because Colt Moore believes it. It's not because the Baptist denomination teaches that. I've never went to no Baptist college. I don't plan on going to one. As long as I got this Bible, I'm all right. Amen. But there's one thing I stand on, and it is the fact that whenever somebody comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that that individual is eternally secure until the day they take their final breath. Now, I'm no stranger to the fact that there's many churches, there's many different denominations that, they, that do not agree with that statement. They do not agree with that belief. But here's the problem. They may not agree with it, but just because they don't agree with it does not make it any less true. Amen. I thank God today that we have promises inside the Word of God that if an individual believes on the Lord, God keeps them, God secures them, God assures them of their salvation until the day of redemption. And the reason God does that, I'll tell you why, is because if there's one area that the devil loves to attack, it is the area of us having the assurance of salvation. All the devil likes to do is get a Christian to get their head hung down and make them think that they're no longer a child of God. Make them feel like they're not worthy to be a child of God. Well, I'm glad today my salvation's in not the lies of the devil. I thank God today my salvation is not in the opinions of men, but I thank God today that my salvation is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. If there's anybody in here today and you make it unto heaven and you're on the way, you're going to get there and go in is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So 
today, what I want to preach to you on is give you a few reasons how I know that I'm saved. Number one, the reason I know I'm saved and I'm eternally saved, you listen to me now, is because the scriptures tell me so. Amen. I don't know if you know this or not, but I stand on the Bible as the final authority in all faith, all practices, all matter. I do not listen to the Robert's Rule of Order. I do not listen to some college textbook. Everything I need to know, God gave it to me in his divinely inspired holy word. Amen. And here in the book of Philippians chapter number one, verse number six, we read what Paul is talking to the church at Philippi. And Paul says this, being confident of this very thing. You did not, you notice Paul did not say being hopeful or thinking or being a maybe so about it. He said, I'm confident. I'm standing on truth. I'm standing on a firm foundation. I know what I'm talking about that he which hath begun a good work in you. What is the good work that God does? Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one good work God does in the individual whenever they're a sinner and it is the work of salvation. Outside of Jesus Christ, there's no good work in you. Outside of Jesus Christ, there's nothing in you that's worthy of getting yourself into heaven. But one day Jesus Christ came by your way. He showed you you were lost. He showed you you was undone. He showed you that without him you'd miss heaven and bust hell wide open. And he began his brother Bradley saying, saying, come unto me. He began saying, I'll give you hope. I'll give you peace. I'll give you life. I'll give you joy. I'll give you strength. I'll give you happiness. And on that day you accepted the Lord into your life. And on that day you want to know what God done? He done a good work in you. But it did not stop there. The Bible said this, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, listen, will perform it. Not only is it a one-time event, but every day of your life, you know what God's doing? He's continuing that good work in you. It's God that creates that work of salvation in the individual. It's God that continues that good work of salvation, what we will now call sanctification, of cleansing us of that old nature and helping us become more like Him, helping us to walk in His Word better and better each and every day. It's not us, but it's God doing it through us. But listen, not only does God create it not only does God continue it but listen what the Bible said in verse number six being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you what will he do will perform it until when until you mess up until you come short until you do enough wrong that he throws his hands up and says I don't care nothing about you you ain't my child no more until that note until the day of Jesus Christ If you believe today, you can lose your salvation, friend. You want to know what it's causing you to do? Doubt the true promises of the Word of God. Amen. The Bible said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you believe on the Lord, you are eternally saved. Why? Because the Scriptures tell you that you are. I don't know if you know this, But you can go from cover to cover in this book and stand on every letter, stand on every word, stand on every punctuation point. Why? Because it's all divinely inspired by God. And the, today I know that I'm saved and it ain't because the newspaper told me. I know that I'm saved. It ain't because the college textbook told me. I know that 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 I'm saved because this Bible tells me. If I believed on him, he does that work. He continues that work, and glory be unto God, one day he completes that work. But not only because of the scriptures this morning do I know that I'm saved, and I'm able to say, praise God, I know that I'm saved, not only because of the scriptures, but listen to me, also because of the Savior. My salvation, listen to me, my salvation is not wrapped up in what I do. Your salvation is not wrapped up in what you do. You may think that your salvation has some kind of effect because you've come to church, friend. I'm glad you come to church. But people can go to the church their whole life and miss heaven. People can give and give and give and pay off the church building, but in themselves, they cannot make it to heaven. But the reason I'm able to stand 
unashamedly, undoubtedly, concreted in the fact that I know I'm saved is because not only do the scriptures tell me, but the Savior secures me. See, this week begins what we know as Holy Week. It was 2,000 years ago, we believe, based on the moon cycle, all this stuff, that it, today was the day that Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, going in on an untamed coat. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever Jesus Christ come into the city that day, we understand people was laying down palm branches and palm leaves, and they were crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory be unto God in the highest and all of these things. But Jesus that week was not entering into that city to become king. He was entering in to die. He was coming into that city because he knew that within seven days, or really five days, he was going to give his life as a ransom for many. The Bible said he gave his life for the whole world. I mean, God loves everybody, but the reason I know I'm saved is because on that week, when Christ come into Jerusalem, he wasn't coming to be established as king. He wasn't coming to overthrow the Roman Empire. He was coming to hang upon a rugged cross. He was coming to be beaten, to be spit upon, to be mocked, to be spit at. He was coming to be ridiculed before the whole world. Why? Because he loved us. Because he loved us. I mean, God, God loved you so much, you may think you're worth nothing this morning. Just know you was worth dying for. That's how much God loves you. And when Jesus was crucified, he cried out three words, it is finished. What was finished? The price paid for our sin. He was laid and taken off the tomb, anointed for burial, was laid in the tomb. But the story didn't end there. Thank God it didn't. Amen. Three days later, by his own strength, by his own power, he rose from the dead, defeated death, hell, and the grave. Amen. That's what we're celebrating next Sunday morning. And 40 days after that, he ascended into the right hand of the throne of God. Listen. And because he is seated upon the right hand of God this morning, I know that I'm saved. How do you, you say, how do you know that you're saved? Just because he's sitting on the right hand of God. If you got your Bible, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 7. I want you to see this with your own eyes. This isn't Colton's opinion. This is the word of God. Because the Savior lives, I know I'm eternally saved. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 7. The Bible says this beginning in verse number 24. The Bible said, but this man... Because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Aren't you glad this morning we don't have to go and make a confession before a Catholic priest? Aren't you glad to hello somebody? Aren't you glad this morning you don't have to go next door and go and sell a booth with somebody as wicked as you are and tell them what you've done and expect them to keep your sins forgiven before God. Amen. We have a great high priest that cannot be church to fill our infirmities. But listen to what the Bible said. Verse 25, wherefore he is able. Who's able? Christ is able. It didn't say Colton Moore is able. If it was up to me, Colton Moore couldn't keep myself saved. If it's up to you, couldn't keep yourself saved. Wherefore, he is able to save them where? To the uttermost. He's able to save. That word uttermost means he's able to save you to a place beyond doubt. To a place that is eternally secure. Listen, that come unto God by him, seeing, listen, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Right now in heaven, listen to me, right now in heaven, at the right hand of the throne of God, there's a man sitting there with scars in his body. There's a man sitting there with nail holes in his hands. There's a man sitting there that has scars upon his forehead where a crown of thorns once been. But there's somebody else that does their best to get to that place. It's that old devil. And the devil, the Bible said he's the, the accuser. The Bible said he's the slanderer. The Bible said he's the adversary of the brethren. And all he does is try to come up to the throne of God. You listen to me and say, you heard what Colton Moore said this week? You know what Colton Moore done this week? You really love him. He's supposed to be a child of yours. And he done this, he done that. You really love Brian for what Brian said, for what Brian done. You really love Neil for what Neil said, for what Neil done. He's constantly accusing the brethren. But thank God there's somebody sitting between him and the Father. And it's that man with the scars in his body. And he's sitting there 
and the, the father looked back at the devil and said, yes, I know they did all them things. But because of those scars, as far as the east is from the west, so far as their sin and transgression removed from them. As a matter of fact, I said, whenever the devil brings them up, you know what God says? What sins are you even talking about? Because the Bible said he puts them behind his back to remember them no more. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason I know that I know that I know that I'm saved is because Jesus is alive and he's in heaven on my and your behalf. He's on your behalf this morning. The Bible said in the book of 1 John chapter number 2, it said, my little children. He said this. He said, if any man sin, we, he said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with God the Father, the man, Christ Jesus. He said, who's not the propitiation for the, our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Ladies and gentlemen, right now in heaven, God, Jesus Christ is interceding to God on your behalf if you're saved. And the reason you can leave this place today and know that you know that you're saved is because Jesus Christ lives. Amen. But not only is it because of the scriptures, not only is it because that the Savior lives, but listen to me, it's also because of the sacrifice the Savior put forth. Bible said we're in Hebrews 7. I want you to turn over to Hebrews chapter number 10. It's just a page or two over in your Bible. How can I know that I know that I know this morning that I'm saved? How can I know that I'm eternally, eternally secure, that I don't have to worry about losing what God gave me? Listen to what the Bible said in verse number uh, 10. The Bible said, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. When? Once for all. Oh, me. Once for all. It didn't say to you mess up. It didn't say to you backslide. It didn't say to you make enough mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sanctified in the body of Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, listen, which can never take away sins. There's still people over in Israel today that followed after Judaism and they still trying to offer up sacrifices and guess what? It ain't getting them nowhere. Ain't getting them nowhere. But listen, verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, for when? Forever. Thank you, Lord. Sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expected to his enemies be made his footstool. Listen. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Ladies and gentlemen, how can I know that I know that I know that I'm saved this morning? I'll tell you why. Scriptures tell me. The Savior lives tells me. Boss, for that sacrifice that day, whenever the sky had turned black between the sixth and the ninth hour, when our Savior was hanging upon the cross and people literally walked by and the Bible said they looked upon him and reviled him and wagged their heads at him. When he hung upon that cross, he cried out in one Latin word translated to tell us that, you know what it meant? It's finished. It's paid in full. It means the account has been settled. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ has not come back to earth once a year and hang upon the cross. No, 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 no. He died one time. It was enough. It was more than enough. It will always be enough. And the reason I know that I'm saved is because it was his sacrifice, not mine, that settled my sin debt and paid for my sins once and for all. Not only is it the scripture, not only is it the Savior, not only is it the sacrifice, but you listen to me, I'm about to be done this morning. Y'all said praise God, hallelujah. I'll say amen too. You know how I know I'm eternally saved? Because God has given us something to assure us each and every day. You want to know what it is? That sweet Holy Spirit. The minute you're saved, the minute you see you're lost, the minute you see that, man, if I were to take my final breath right now, I'd go to hell. One day, hell would deliver me up, Brother Neil, and I'd go into the lake of fire to be tormented where the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are day and night, forever and ever. You notice there's night in hell. There's no night in heaven. You ever thought about that? But you torment it day in, day out, forever and ever. It never ends. Why? Because you rejected the Lord. But you saw your need. You saw that would be you. You say, Lord, I see there's nothing I can do with myself. Lord, save me. It's, it's just a matter of faith. It's so simple. We make it so hard. It's not in a fancy prayer you pray. It can't be. It's in your faith. 
in Jesus Christ. It'd be like taking a coat and hanging it upon a hook because you can trust that hook to hold your coat. That's how simple that it is. And ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're saved, right then, God gives you a comforter. He gives you a helper. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. The third person in the Godhead. Our God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Why did God give the comforter? Why did he give the Spirit of God? Do you want to know why he said? To be a teacher of truth in all things. To bring comfort unto them that are mine. And ladies and gentlemen, he says that way he would testify of me. Whenever you were saved, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse number 13, and whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, and after you heard the word of truth, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. God put a stamp. He put a seal on you. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, the Bible says, uh, whereby grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until you mess up. No. You sealed till you make a mistake. No, he said you are sealed until the day of redemption. What does that mean? I'll give you an illustration. I'll try to the best I can. I love that woman back there, Michaela Beckmore. That's my wife, amen? She ain't your wife. Don't even talk to her. She's my wife, amen? Whenever I loved that woman, I was poor then. I gave her a little bitty old engagement ring. I knelt down on her mom and daddy's driveway right there over the creek, and I proposed to her and I asked her, would you be my wife? And she regrettably now said yes. <laughs> Ain't that bad. Is she gone? Is she in here? <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> but when she said yes, oh, man. Some of y'all looking nervous right now. <laughs> Fanning and everything else. Y'all all right? But listen, whenever she, said, whenever she said yes, you know what I did? I placed a ring upon her finger. When I placed that ring upon her finger, it was a promise that one day me and her is going to come together as one. Won't be no divorce taking place. That word ain't even in our household. Ain't in our household. Divorce, no. She's my wife. She's going to be until me or her died. After that, she's still going to be my wife. I told her I ain't never getting married. I ain't never dating again. Amen. 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 Want me to tell you why, Vernie? <laughs> I said, I got to make sure she can't throw a hymn book that far. I said, because one of y'all is more than enough, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and then I turned around, and this is what I said. I said, because, honey, I couldn't find another woman like you. And you know what she said? I hope I never do find another man like you. Amen. <laughs> You men know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Never get married again. That, 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 that's my wife. That's my wife right there. But I gave her a token. I gave her a sign. I gave her a seal. That one day we're going to come together as one. We're going to be together. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you were saved, it's almost like the Lord just put a ring upon you, right. put a seal upon you, and said, you're mine. And there's one day I'm bringing you home to be with me forever. I got his spirit in me. I got that comfort. I got that hope. I got that assurance in me. He lives within me. But there's coming a day I'm going to literally see him with my own eyes. And whenever I literally lay my eyes upon the Lord, as they sung about a few minutes ago, when at last we see the face of Jesus, before who all enmity and strife will flee, and when they crown him Lord of all, I'll be there. For this is what heaven means to me. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever we lay our eyes upon him, the Bible says, so shall we ever be with him. Why is that? He's because he's given us an assurance. He's given us a no-so. How did he do it? He gave it to us through the scriptures, through the Savior, through the sacrifice. But ladies and gentlemen, he also gave it to us through the Spirit. And he gave you that Holy Spirit. And whenever, that, whenever the Holy Spirit is abiding within you, whenever he's living upon you, yes, we still mess up. We still make mistakes. But you know what he does? He says, that wasn't right. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that. What's he doing? He's testifying of him that's living in you. You start thinking something you don't need to be thinking. You know what he says? Don't need to be thinking that. Don't need to go down that road. You know where it led you last time. You don't need to do it again. What is it? It is the Lord assuring you that you're here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can call yourself saved this morning, I'm closing my Bible that way. Y'all know I'm done. Y'all say, that don't matter. I've seen you get up and preach and fall out and not even have the Bible. But listen, I'm done this morning. 
If you can call yourself a child of God and you can go and live in an open sin, but there's no conviction there, I'd be really concerned about my salvation. That's one of the greatest evidences that you know, that you know, that you know that you're saved. Ladies and gentlemen, there may be people in here today, I may end on this note, because many people won't preach on the doctrine of eternal security. They won't preach on having the assurance of salvation. I wish I had a month to go over it, because it's not limited to one Sunday morning message. We could go from the front to the back and see that was God's plan, it's God's design, it's God that eternally secures us. But ladies and gentlemen, many people will not preach upon it because they think it gives somebody a license or a freedom to sin. It don't. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And there may be people in here today, I want you to listen to me, listen to me well. You're saved, and you may say, and you may frustrate the grace of God. You say, well, I know I'm saved, I believe in the Lord, I'm going to go do what I want to do. Friend, that's dangerous ground to walk on. You may not agree with this. It don't matter if you agree with this. It's the Bible. I'll show you. I'll tell you what. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'll show you. This is true. First, you see, you closed your Bible. We opened it back up. Round 2, honey. 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. That way you know how serious this is. Thank you. You can go out and do what you want to do just because you eternally saved, friends. That's dangerous ground to walk on. 1 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 1. The Bible said this, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Listen, there was a man in the church of Corinth that was saved, but found himself sleeping with his stepmother. That was what's taking place. Strange stuff. Listen, verse number 2. And you are, perfed up, you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he might that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you, but for I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has done, that has so done this thing. So Paul said, I'm going to tell you, I'm not there in person, but I'm going to tell you what to do, because this is what the Lord showed me you need to do. Verse number four, he said, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Y'all see that? That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You say, what's that talking about? If somebody's a child of God, but they're going out living in open sin and they're unrepentant about it, they want to do what they want to do, they don't want to listen, they don't want to get back on the right track, God will allow that individual, to the, he'll give them up unto the devil for the destruction of the flesh, this body right here. Why? That way the soul will be saved. Still, still saved? Feel a child of God, but listen, God will not be mocked concerning his children. God has a standard for his children to live by, and it ought to bring a heat, it ought to bring a solemn charge to everybody in here today that if you're saved, you need to live like you're saved. Because if you don't live like you're saved, ladies and gentlemen, you're allowing yourself up to the devil to be destroyed in the flesh. Why? That way your soul will be saved. You love your family, you love your people around you, you want to spend many long years with them, you need to walk right, you need to live right. If you're a born-again child of God, amen. I, just because I believe in doctrine of eternal security, it does not mean I believe anybody can go do what they want to do. No, you cannot. And if you do it, you need to get made right today, amen. But are you saved? I'm going to ask the musicians to come up today. If today you took your final breath right now, just that simple, that fast, you took your final breath, where would you go? Would you go to heaven? Would you go to hell? Let's say right now the Lord came back just that fast. Everybody was took out. Those that went to sleep in the Lord was raptured out of the ground. We followed up behind him, all of us that saved. Would you be left behind? There's probably people in here today that would. You say, Colton, I don't want to be left behind. Colton, I want to go to hell. I want to go to the lake of fire. I want to go to heaven. You say, how can I be saved? Friend, you got to acknowledge you're a sinner. Everybody that's conceived, born in this world, are sinners. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. I told church Wednesday night, I was talking to an atheist a couple weeks ago, and they tried to say all these things. I said, listen, friend, I said, the ground is level at the foot of Calvary. You're no better than me. I'm no better than you. If you're going to go to heaven, we all got to go the same way. It's through him. Today you lost, never been saved. God spoke to your heart. And today you want to leave here with peace, with hope, with life, with assurance knowing that you're a nobody, but Christ can make you a somebody. You can do that today. Bible said he was crucified, he was buried, he was risen again, perfect, sinless, and spotless. 
and all he asks you to do is believe upon him and thou shalt be saved. Brother Bradley, would you come to the steps this morning? We're going to grab a hymn book. We're going to stand. Turn to page 81. If God spoke to you this morning, why don't you come? Maybe you just need to talk about it. I'll meet you down here. We'll talk about it. Nobody's going to laugh at you. I promise you this morning. Nobody will laugh at you. We'll rejoice with you. The Bible said the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul that gets saved. Angels right now are on the edge of their seats in heaven looking at a soul that may be needing to get saved today. Is that you? Is the angels waiting on you today? Is Christ telling you to come? We're going to sing just as I am if God spoke to you. Begin making your way. Don't let the devil hinder you. People will move out of the way. Come on down this morning. One play, he'll take you as you are. Come on. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Before we bow our heads for prayer, Brother Bradley done a lesson on that song. That song's what, nearly 300 years old, Brother Bradley, something like that? It was wrote by a blind woman, is that right? That was suffering with depression, suffering with it. Satan was trying to get her to doubt salvation, but she remembered the day she came. She came just as she was, and when she came just as she was, Christ made her into somebody he wanted her to be. Maybe somebody here today, that's you. You feel like a nobody, you feel like you don't have no hope, you ain't got no life, you ain't got no peace. Outside of him, you don't. Outside of him, you're not complete. Many people are looking for one piece of a puzzle. It's like, it's like your life's like a puzzle. The illustration I give a lot. And people are constantly looking for one piece to fill that empty void, that one piece. The Bible said in the book of Colossians chapter number 2, and ye are complete in him. He's the only one that can make you complete this morning. We're going to sing that second stanza. If God's speaking to you today, I know he's speaking to somebody in here today. God's speaking to you. Don't let the devil keep you on that pew. Come down. Talk to me this morning. We're going to sing stanza number two. They begin to sing. Yes, yes. God good had a young lady just get saved amen
God good this morning? God's good this morning. Look, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in divine providence. You never know what one invitation, inviting one person to church can do for them. Just one simple invitation. Young lady was invited to church today. God knew she was looking for peace, looking for hope, looking for life. And thank God she found it at the foot of the cross. Amen. Do you have that hope? Do you got that peace? I'll tell you what, when anything like this happens, I love to sing God Saves Old Sinners. We're going to do it again. Amen. We're going to sing God Saves Old Sinners. God's good, is he not? We'll start. We'll just do the chorus this morning. Amen. God's speaking to you. You come on down this morning. It could be your day. You get changed as well. I am so glad God saves old sinners. Amen. Sing along with me now. I'm this morning i'm glad god's good good looking crowd on this beautiful sunday morning god's presence is here from the moment i got here this morning i knew god was here he's in control always has been always will be god loves each and every single one of you lord willing we'll see you this coming wednesday night lord willing if you don't come wednesday night we'll see you next sunday morning we'd encourage you like we saw this morning just one invitation to church can change somebody's life invite somebody to church or start praying say god give me a burden to invite one person, Lord, that needs you. And next week may be the day God changes somebody for his honor and for his glory. Brother Brian, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Yes.